so here's a follow-up to the first episode of the skill showdown i wanted to go through the the teams that i used and uh, the comp the team compositions the pre-fights and stuff like that so if y'all haven't watched the episode this one's gonna have some spoilers in it uh, basically in this one I pit uh, four of the most recent buffed skill characters Daredevil, uh, Falcon, uh, Kingpin and Mole Man against uh, two of the, the classically considered uh, gods of the class which would be uh, Nick Fury and Blade and as far as the results are concerned uh, we see here that Nick Fury obviously came first with the highest DPS and DPH numbers. Uh, Daredevil was last, Blade was second, and the rest of them were also somewhere in the ranks there. Alright, so let's see what kind of teams I used. I put together this little infographic here to, uh, to showcase the teams that were used. And first of all, this is mostly for fun, this is not meant to be practical or uh, you know actually doable in, in a lot of real content so I'm also taking that into account here I'm scoring each of these teams based on uh, versatility and practicality versatility score is going to be at a four versatility basically assumes that you're going to be bringing the main character along and if you are going to be bringing the main character along uh, how many of the the remaining characters in the team are going to be offering something you know unique and significant and meta relevant so like in in terms of this first team as an example we're assuming that you're bringing kingpin along so if you're bringing kingpin along i would i would say maybe daredevils and mr sinister's debuff shrug abilities are not necessarily going to be as unique as versatile to your team but uh, like Daredevil and Electra's ability accuracy reduction may be, may be something that you'd be after or you know White Magneto's prowesses, the bleed, uh, the armor break and all that so that would get a 2 out of 4 in versatility for the ability accuracy reductions and uh, the, the armor breaks and the prowesses and everything for Magneto and practicality score is going to be at a 5 and practicality basically refers to how many of the characters here in total I consider to be uh, worth bringing, worth playing. Basically, uh, a score in, in terms of tier list, like how many of them I would consider to be, I don't know, useful. Uh, so in this first example here, we have Kingpin. This is going to be out of five. This is not assuming that you're bringing the main character along. So Kingpin uh, is going to be one of them, and, and uh, Magneto is going to be the other one. All right, so this is the first team. The first team here, I think Mr. Sinister is absolutely essential to getting maximum damage out of Kingpin. You get that power lock after they use special. And uh, White Magneto may not give Kingpin the, uh, the uh, passive stuns, but he does give him the extra attack rating. And Elektra is here for some synergies with Kingpin, but also some uh, power gain synergies with Daredevil, which Kingpin uh, benefits somewhat from. Alright, Daredevil. This is a pretty interesting team that I bring along with him. Uh, Daredevil relies a lot on heavies, so White Magneto is going to be pretty essential here to, to facilitate that kind of playstyle in a place where there's Limba. And uh, in terms of practicality, this team actually, I think, is, is pretty decent. You got, you know, it would be a 3 out of 5, a 3.5 out of 5. So you have like Daredevil who would be a half a point in terms of practicality because he's not that good. Uh, and then Kingpin and White Magneto and then She-Hulk all uh, offer different things, all are pretty viable characters. Alright, moving on to the next one, Blade. Now this one's going to be pretty interesting because there's a choice to be made here. So Blade obviously is going to have to come with his Trinity because when fighting Red Hulk, Red Hulk's a villain. You want to enhance the danger sense and all that. So as for the remaining two spots, I went, I uh, chose to go f with uh, a dead Nick Fury, which is going to be giving Blade extra twenty percent attack rating, and a White Magneto. White Magneto now benefits Blade, Blade a lot because of the the passive stuns, and also because of the uh, 
because of the extra attack rating. Uh, but there could be another alternative here because blades damage, uh, a lot of it comes from the bleeds and if you want to enhance those bleeds you could go with a bleed enhancing synergy team like the, the Black Panthers. Um, that would enhance the bleeds uh, by around 25%. But, uh, you know, what could make that a little bit better or a little bit worse, can, you know, depending on the situation, uh, than White Magneto and Nick Fury giving Blade an extra 35% attack would be that the, the extra bleed damage, the extra bleed modifier is actually applied after the damage is calculated. So, you know, it would scale with, with Danger Sense and all that. But I ultimately decided to go with this. Uh, I also could have went with uh, White Magneto and Mr. Fantastic for Blade because Blade's playstyle is not heavy reliant, but Blade's playstyle is very much SP1 and SP2 reliant. He can keep up the debuffs and Mr. Fantastic would have allowed him to bait less specials. Uh, but ultimately I just went with uh, Nick Fury to get that extra solid 20% uh, attack rating. Right, moving on to Mole Man. Mole Man's uh, got a very heavy reliant uh, playstyle, um, and Mr. Fantastic's debuffs can be upkept pretty well for him. Uh, he is also getting one bleed enhancing synergy and one white magneto for the extra attack rating. Mr. Fantastic's pre fights are incredibly underrated. You you have the suppression pre fight and you have the the debuff enhancement pre fight and. Uh, the debuff enhancement, again, like the bleed enhancement, comes in after the, the damage, is, damage and everything is calculated. So it's basically a solid 20 something percent of extra debuff damage uh, on top of every other damage modifier you get. And uh, the, the suppression one, the suppression one actually allows you to bait less specials and that's massive for DPS. That's really important for DPS and going faster. Uh, basically, having to bait 20% less specials uh, means you have to bait 20% less, and that that could be that could be making a big difference there. For Falcon, I, w I went with a Falcon Falcon heavy team. Uh, basically, Falcon has this ability that gives himself and everybody on his team extra 3% attack rating based on every synergy node that's active on him. So here we have three Falcons, each of them have two synergy nodes active with Captain America uh, World War II, uh, Captain America Infinity War and uh, Hall Obsidian. So that would be a total of 18% uh, from, from just the Falcons here, three times, uh, three times three uh, times two would be, would be 18%. And uh, also, these synergies are giving this the whole team extra attack rating, so this would be resulting in a net maybe 65% attack rating for Falcon, for the big Falcon up top. Uh, obviously, it's not very versatile, it's not very practical, you're bringing two Falcons along, but you're going to be only using one of them. But, you know, it's not that's not the point of these, it's just to, just to have a little bit of fun. All right. And for the last one, Nick Fury, I'm bringing along the, the passive stunts from White Magneto and the bleed enhancements. I could have gotten away with not bringing Magneto, but again, the, the, the bleed enhancements are calculated on top of extra attack rating and, Magneto, and Nick Fury is actually getting the extra 15% from White Magneto. So, uh, you know, that, that team put in a lot of work. Uh, as far as masteries, I ran uh, I ran suicides with Kingpin. I ran suicides with uh, Mole Man. I believe I ran suicides with Falcon. And uh, for the rest of them, for Nick Fury, Blade, and Daredevil, I didn't run suicides. I went with Deep Wounds. All right. Yeah. I hope you all enjoyed watching this. I'm gonna be back with the behind the scenes, you know, team setup, team composition, masteries, explanations for part two. And part three is going to be coming out. That's going to be the final part for Skill Showdown. And uh, from there, we're going to be moving on to different classes and also maybe different types of testing. 
not always it's going to be uh, DPS testing, maybe it's going to be survivability or tankiness testing or damage mitigation or, you know, evade testing or whatever. It's going to be uh, a little bit of fun. Uh, thanks y'all for your support for the series so far. I uh, appreciate it. And yeah, see y'all later. Bye.